Well, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Um, it's awesome to be here. Uh, AMA has been wonderful to us, and thank you so much. Our theme of our team is Chase the Dream, Not the Competition, and it's been uh, with us ever since we started racing, and it's served us well. It's kept us focused on what we've had to do chasing our dreams rather than looking behind us. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a bunch of stuff here, including some of the model stuff. Today I'm going to talk to you a little about the Formula One Nemesis that's uh, residing in the Smithsonian. That's the top picture there. And then also the Nemesis NXT, the new fire breather that we have. The bug, uh, aviation bug bit me way back in the 50s. I started uh, flying control line models back in the 50s where a couple friends of mine and I, we'd gather up our wagons and we'd load all of our airplanes and our fuel, our peanut butter sandwiches and our water, and we'd head down to the park every day for the summer. All summer, we'd fly our models and have a great time. We'd fly them till we'd break them. We'd flew little Satan's PT-109s. The PT-109, that's the little, it's a little plastic airplane that had rubber bands holding it all together. Smash it into the ground, parts go all over the place. Put new rubber bands on it, start it up nick your finger on the prop and off you go again. So we would uh, fly our model airplane, our wooden airplanes, the Satans and the Voodoos and stuff like that, crash them into the ground, put them back together with Ambroid and wood glue and all that stuff, wait an hour, start the engine up, engine goes flying off because the glue wasn't set. So anyway, we found this wonderful discovery called five minute epoxy. So we could now glue our planes back together and fly them in 10 minutes. It was great. So we had a lot of fun uh, doing that in the park during the 50s. In the 60s and 70s and 80s, flew RC planes, RC racing, sailplanes, boats, and cars. Um, I started RC flying uh, with a single channel box with a button on it, which was pushed the button one time for left rudder and two times for right rudder. So you build the plane to climb out at a gentle climb. You control the climb by bumping the, the button for the rudder all the time. So you'd hold the button to make the thing turn and it would descend down. That was uh, how I started flying RC. I transitioned into RC plane racing when uh, the club in Albuquerque had uh, a kit builder named Noel Roselle and he built a kit called a joystick. Has anybody heard of that thing? back in the 60s. You've heard of an ugly stick, right? Okay, well this is like an ugly stick, but not quite as ugly. They were um, powered by a 15-sized engine. So we all in the club had these joysticks. So we decided we're gonna race them. So we all set up, made some rules, had to be a stock airplane, stock 15 engine. We all had to use the same fuel, all that stuff. So we're starting to race them, and I'm having some success racing, but never happy with not being fast enough. So they didn't have any rules per se other than the plane had to be stock, but any good racer knows that you kind of have to bend the rules or cheat. So I bought myself another kit, stacked up all the wing ribs, sanded down the ribs to be thinner, made the wing a little skinnier. And you know, I'm flying it right there next to the guy who designed the kit. Never knew. So anyway, so my plane was obviously faster than everybody else's, so I had a blast beating everybody. But it was just not quite good enough. I'd noticed that as I turned the thing, you know, we'd roll the thing up, doing that classic 90 degree pylon turn and pull full stick. I'd noticed, because my wing was thinner, that it would mush out in the turns. So I had scratch in my mind and, you know, having to modify everything. All this is leading up to where I got the air racing bug. So I decided I needed to do something about the turn speed. Couldn't modify the airplane again. You know, had to keep it fairly stock. So I came up with a way to, from the elevator servo, when I would go to full up elevator, I had a little mechanism that would go bump the flap servo to droop the flaps in the turns. Nobody knew about it. It was completely unknown. I had it packed in the back of the airplane so nobody could find it. 
nobody understood why when I would f show up at the airplane field, how my airplane would come out of the car all put together. And we put it on the scale, and magically it weighed, I don't know, five, six ounces more than everybody's, and I'd just go, yeah, I just built it heavy, you know, I gotta do better. But it was things like that little mechanism that made it heavy. So I had a great time with that, and that really kind of set the stage for my air racing career, because if you're successful at racing anything, you gotta be cheating. That's what they think, and that's what everybody knows. So that was uh, the fun stuff with airplanes. Also raced cars, sailplanes, had a lot of fun flying sailplanes, laying on the back of my 63 Corvair, flying sailplanes up, just flying for hours and hours and hours, uh, doing thermal flying, had a great time. All this stuff shaped the career that I ultimately wound up racing airplanes at Reno, building airplanes at Lockheed and stuff like that. So we transition into the 70s. I pretty much gotten away from uh, flying models by that time, but I had a Formula One racer, full scale. Actually, it was about as big as one of those things on the back wall there, 20-foot wingspan. I never really wanted to get too far away from the RC guys, so I would take this plane off and I'd go fly it outside of uh, Wester, of Albuquerque. And when I was done tearing up the desert, beating all the cows up, uh, flying low, I'd circle around the RC field they clear the decks and I come down, I make four or five passes, you know, at 200 plus miles an hour on the RC field. So that was a great time uh, for me. Almost my salute to uh, the upbringing of, of models that got me to where I am today.